purchased two of these magnifying I called it magnaflow before but it's magnifying and has a nice filter inside of it it's a high flow capacity and it also has some magnets inside of it which can pick up any type of uh, microscopic uh, debris wear on uh, the mechanisms that you're using this in mind for now the Toyota FJ Cruiser uh, the actual uh, transmission pan if you pull it there's something up there that looks like an old-fashioned filter but it's not when you take it apart it's basically a screen for big chunky bits it doesn't really have any type of filtering properties again it's just a screen and that really kind of bugs me so I'm gonna actually install this on the return line coming from the radiator so that I do have some filtration and that way what I'll do is when it comes time to go ahead and change the fluid uh, when I drain it then I can go ahead and have one of these ordered and replace the filter also this should actually help keep it cleaner uh, pick up any microscopic debris that's in there instead of it all settling in the pan and um, you know, it'll be really nice I also use one exactly like this uh, on an earlier video for the power steering system for the same reason um, the neat thing is the power steering reservoir is kind of small it doesn't hold a lot of fluid and this actually in here acts like an additional reservoir to actually hold more fluid and the power steering of course that's what you use to lubricate cool it and everything else so it really came in handy for that to attach it uh, with the hoses uh, you can use you know these type with uh, which is fine a lot of people use these I don't like the fact that it's a little worm gear and you're relying on the strength to be inside of these little cracks here again they're not bad uh, I prefer this type here uh, this is actually all stainless steel this is a mix of stainless and regular and I think I'm going to need a size about this one here which is the main size I've been using so far but you can see with the nut and the screw type thing it actually tightens up pretty good and uh, I know I just found these to be a bit more reliable than these ones here and they don't wear out um, but you can use whatever you want to it doesn't really matter so what I'm going to do is get underneath the truck after I pull the rock guards <clears throat> I'm going to expose that tube I'll show you guys and uh, these are basically just um, pinch off for the hose and um, you basically squeeze them bring this up and holds it in place uh, they're kind of nice and blunt I think I got three of these from Harbor Freight Tools for next to nothing and they're the same quality as this one here this was from a high dollar one this was actually given to me by a buddy and um, I don't know they, they just all do the same thing so I'm pretty happy with them so we'll pinch off the tube when we cut it there'll be very little fluid loss we'll get this in line get the clamps on there uh, I'll see if just sitting there is okay or if I want to attach it to something kind of like I did with the uh, oh let's see here at the power steering uh, filter I was able to uh, use a tie wrap on either end to some of the stuff that was already in there so for now let's go ahead and get that pulled and uh, we'll go ahead and talk more about it so this is a filter I had put on for the small or lower pressure return line for the power steering system and uh, that's how I was able to basically tie wrap it down there and again over here not too tight to pinch the hose but enough to hold it in place and we're going to do something similar to this uh, with the automatic transmission. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but uh, the PCB valve is on the driver's side in the head, and it's all the way in the back right here. I'm kind of pointing it, uh, pointing to it with this screwdriver. And, um, of course, for me, because I have the supercharger, uh, I didn't feel like pulling this off, so I was able to go into it at an angle from, like, right here, uh, along with a couple universal joints and a 19 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove that now it had been in there a while and it's a tapered thread so I actually had to get in there uh, yesterday and uh, use some liquid wrench basically let it sit in for about a half an hour and then it kind of broke loose which was nice the new one I put on I used some anti seas so I should never have that problem again but they're anywhere from five dollars to twenty five dollars they all do the same thing whatever one you guys want to do and uh, I didn't film this only because you wouldn't be able to see anything everything was buried in there so that's something I did yesterday which brings me to oil catch cans okay now my FJ basically is a bit different uh, I have an SFI type of engine all right so oh and I also found out the FJ is called the XJ10 I don't know why but that's what the uh, the actual Japanese originally named it before it became the FJ cruiser so SFI means sequential fuel injection okay so what that basically means is anything coming out of this pipe here the PCV system 
and goes into the intake, the fuel is squirted before the intake valve. So if there's any microscopic bits of oil or something, it's also hit by the fuel injector fuel, which dissolves it, puts it into the chamber and actually burns it, which is kind of nice. Now, I'm not sure about the newer FJs, but if you have a GDI, that means gasoline direct injection. And what they're doing on the newer ones, they're actually injecting the fuel beyond, past the valve, into the cylinder directly. Now, the cool thing is that gives you more torque, more power, a little bit better gas mileage. However, now you've got nothing cleaning off that valve. So if you have a regular PCV system, and it's actually, over time, uh, actually sucking up some oil that's coming through the uh, crankcase and all that stuff, um, it's got to build up and give you a lot of carbon deposits on the inlet for that intake valve. So that's a problem. So if you have a GDI engine, I would highly recommend doing a catch can. I don't need it. I have an SFI. I'm not sure about the newer FJs before they stopped shipping them. They're still making them. They're sold all over the world. Uh, well, not all over the world, but not about half the world still. Uh, they're just not over here anymore. So on the newer ones, I have an 07 SFI. Double check your engine. Later on, uh, they went to a different engine. Uh, the oil was uh, oil filter was in a different spot. It was a little bit smaller, and it was tuned a bit differently and stuff. But check yours. If it's a GDI, I would highly recommend doing a catch can. And all it is is coming off of this side of the PCV into the catch can, and then the other side of the catch can goes back to here. And it gives you a chance to be able to, it kind of like looks something like this. This is a reservoir of uh, radiator fluid for a uh, cooling system for my uh, supercharger. But it's something like this. And it's kind of a neat thing. Again, SFI, I don't mind it uh, getting burned off with the gasoline. I got no problem with that. It passes, it passes emission tests and everything else. But if you have a GDI, you may want to consider putting in an old catch can. Anyway, don't let anybody just talk you into, oh, you're going to do one. You don't really have to if you have an SFI. Okay, now we'll get back to the other stuff. Just a little bit of lesson there to help you guys out. So most of you guys that don't have this, um, you can get into your PCV valve easy. Again, with a 19 millimeter, take it out, put a new one in. I do it about every 60,000 miles. Uh, just change it out because it's a valve and it can get gunked up and God forbid you don't want it stuck closed. Uh, being stuck open isn't too bad, but you want it to basically work because it's a check valve for one way. So that's something to do. And I didn't film it, but that's where it's at. Okay, so I'm underneath the vehicle, and the front of the vehicle is actually that way there, coming back. And what I need is, you can see this first hose, goes all the way up the top. I need the one that comes out of the bottom, which is going to be this one right here. And if you follow it down, it turns into a hard line, which is awfully nice. And it comes over here, when it goes back into a soft, flexible line. So this is the area here we're going to go ahead and install the uh, filter in. Now, the direction is basically going this way okay so that's the way I have to put the uh, filter on for flow so what I'm going to do is pinch off up there and down here right after this connection here and we will go ahead and uh, pinch that off use a little bit of uh, rags or paper towels to go ahead and wipe up the excess and we'll put that in and we'll get the uh, the new clamps on there and we'll get this installed again up there you can see the bottom of the one I installed for the uh, power steering and this one will sit right down here. Um, it looks like I won't have to worry about suspending it or attaching it to anything, but we'll have a better look once I get it installed. But this is the pipe here, not this one. This one here is the one we're going to put the filter on. All right, these are little hose pinch clamps here. Um, you can use whatever you want to, but these are specifically designed for hoses. Um, you can clamp pretty tight as you squeeze this kind. Of, this actually comes down here. And it's got these little ribs to lock in place, whatever you want. But they don't hurt the hose because they're very, very blunt. And this is really the best thing uh, to go ahead and use. So, like I said, I'll go ahead and cut this. And um, I'll see if I need to remove any. Or maybe if I just put the filter in, which will extend it heading towards this one here. Maybe I can use a tie wrap or something. I'm not sure yet. So, the first thing I need to do is uh, cut this. And of course get a rag and there'll be a little bit of fluid in this line here because it is going from the transmission up to the radiator um, and I need to catch that it won't be that much uh, of a loss but still I don't want a big mess so we'll go ahead and get that uh, sopped up after we go ahead and cut it and there we have it because of this rigid line here and how short it is that's actually holding everything in place so I don't have to worry about any tie wraps or any of that stuff 
Again, we have the clip on here, wrenched down pretty good. Spacing left over is right there. It's just starting to twist, so I know that's pretty darn tight. Same thing with the top on there. Now, of course, I'm going to go ahead and run it, start up the vehicle, and let this do its thing and um, make sure that there's no leaks. But basically, that's it. So I have a filter way up there for the power steering, and the exact same filter down here. Again, it's pointing that way, a little arrow that's right on there. And, and that's the way that it flows. So I'll go ahead and start the vehicle. I'll check for any types of uh, leaks. And if it's good, I'll put it back together. And that's it. Now I have a nice micro uh, filter along with a magnet in it for the automatic transmission fluid. And it can work in conjunction with the transmission fluid screen that's actually up inside the transmission pan itself. Again, 60,000 miles, 60,000 miles, that's when I basically change all the fluids. And um, this will make it easy. I'll just buy the same filters and I can pop them back in again. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this buttoned up. All right, I know it's a little noisy with the engine running, but there's the transmission down there. Of course, we already talked about the uh, power steering one here, but you can basically check these, even with the uh, shields installed for any leaks or whatever. But uh, this is the time to service it. So I won't let it run for a while, let the uh, fluid get nice and hot. But those are torqued down pretty good, man. I don't expect these to leak at all. Anyway, so that should do it, man. That's two filters. Definitely something to make the uh, FJ last longer.